So XDefy got a handful of updates since our last discussion about the game. And today I want to run down what those are for you and what you need to know. So as we go along, drop your thoughts, drop a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe for more coverage of XDefy and other FPS content here on the channel. I'd love to have in the community. For now, let's jump into it. So the information today comes directly from Mark Rubin himself, executive producer on X Defiant, in which he interacted with questions following their most recent status update of sorts on the issues like party systems, the net code, and the game ahead of launch in the next submission phase. One of the first things that was mentioned was the question of, will it have skill-based matchmaking? Now, if you guys have followed X Defiant, one of the big things the entire time through messaging has, no, there will not be any SBMM or skill-based matchmaking. But he did clarify that there is going to be a slightly adjusted version here to this where it seems to be optional which is a big thing to know going in where he stated no skill based matchmaking in normal playlists we will have a welcome playlist for players under level 25 that will have skill based matchmaking but all of the other playlists will not have it ranked will have a ranked based matchmaking let me know if that makes sense if not i can go into it further now, that's basically boot camp playlists is my takeaway from this. Something we've seen in the Call of Duty space VR coming over from that sort of thing, where once you get into the higher ranks, that goes away. You can no longer queue into those specific playlists, and you'll be thrown into the standard matchmaking system with no skill-based matchmaking. But in that welcome playlist, there is some to help ease new players into things. So you're not just stomping brand new players as somebody that is like a max level player. This, I kind of think, is a non-issue for anyone trying to nitpick. This was around in the classic Call of Duty games. This was kind of the blueprint here for how that matchmaking system works, and it was a non-issue back then. There was no deceptive matchmaking after you leveled out of those beginner playlists or anything like that. It was used only at a low level to keep higher skilled players that, again, could have had days and weeks of playtime into the game from stomping somebody who may have no clue what the game is and therefore deterring them from playing it. And the biggest thing, again, is that there is no mandatory period here to play. It's not like you're capped in that skill-based matchmaking bracket of a welcome playlist through level 25. It's only you can interact with it and you can queue into it up until level 25. So you don't have to go into it at all. You don't have to go in, have any sort of matchmaking parameters other than just simply connection if you don't want to. That's just like how the classic COD games worked. It seems like we'll have some ability to queue into that. So again, entirely dependent on the user at that point. Mark Rubin also described a little bit of the post-launch content and some things we'll be seeing a little later on down the line where things like custom keybinds were brought into question again, where the question of will there be custom controller binding to which he said, unfortunately, not right out of the gate. This is something that I want as well well, and we'll push for when it makes sense from a production standpoint. And this has kind of been one of those things that it's been well documented to be the case, but seeing it be reiterated is nice. And it seems like that's something that we'll see later on down the line, but at least for the launch, don't get your hopes up. And then the prestige system was something that was clarified a little bit further, where somebody asked, will there be prestiges like old CODs? To which Mark Rubin replied, we're designing that system as we speak. We want to have the classic prestige system, but we also recognize that while games like COD, you get a new set of prestiges every year, a la a new game. And we are designing a game to last for years, so we're looking at the possibility of yearly prestiges. Personally, I think that's pretty cool. Again, this has been something that's been well documented that would not be there at launch, but would be there down the line. Any ETA on when that will be, we don't know, but it's a cool insight further into the plans for how they're going to implement a prestige system. We knew they wanted to add prestiges, but in what capacity, we had absolutely no indication. Yearly prestiges are that possibility, which I, again, think is pretty cool. Giving the ability to reset and start anew if you'd like, providing benefit and reward each time that you want to do that in the year, but also meaning that you won't perpetually be stuck at one singular max level. That I think I could get on board for. It's not as trivial as like a seasonal reset or anything like that, but instead is a larger picture type thing. If they do go that route, though, I'm kind of hoping that they see the introduction of a career rank alongside that, like how it was introduced in Cold War. You can hit the max level, it'll get reset eventually, but you still keep those bragging rights of the like, I was there, but instead of reset being seasonally like it was back in Black Ops Cold War every two months or so, instead it'd be a thing like an annual COD release where you've reset once a year, but you still have that ability to show off that yes, I was level 2000, 3000, whatever our max level would be throughout all of that. One thing to remind people of also, this was mentioned by an interaction in the replies to this, is that the term designing does not mean the launch game is not completed. This, as we talked about, was something that was a longer term planned item, something that was not going to be there at launch and as such does not have any sort of weight or relevance to the launch product. 
as to all games that have DLC, forward planning is paramount. Otherwise, you'd never ship anything on time. Studios are usually working on the game that you'll see months down the road at any given time. So for example, X Defiance probably in their sort of April to May planning and production. COD's probably putting the finishing touches on season three content, maybe knee deep in season four content, and so on. Studios are always going to be a few months ahead of schedule so that they can correct anything that comes up as a bug in development. They have the ability to put finishing touches on things, the ability to test everything that could need testing, and so on and so forth. Designing as a word choice isn't indicative of the state of the game, come when it launches, and wasn't the point of the statement being made, especially given that we know the prestige system was kind of an afterthought of sorts and wouldn't be introduced near launch as is. And the final thing that I touch on here that was mentioned directly by Mark Rubin was the potential of another playtest at some point. He was asked, are we getting another playtest or are you guys going to release the entire game when ready? To which he answered, we'll let you know soon when we have everything set in stone. So while there's still a chance that, yes, this doesn't happen, maybe we don't get any ability to play the game from now until then the game actually launches, I do kind of find it promising that we've had now multiple interactions that didn't dismiss the chance of it. They didn't say no, that it's going to happen. They also didn't say yes, that it would happen. It makes me feel like they're still gunning to get another one out there to test those things like netcode, the new party system and everything, but they don't have a solid date or any information on when to share. Again, as we've talked about, logically it makes sense that when you make these fundamental changes and overhauls, that you'd want to get some sort of data set out there. I've said it before across X Defiant and other games we've covered here on the channel, if you want to test something, yes, you can absolutely do it in-house with QA and everything like that. You can test as much as you want, but usually QA teams and departments don't have hundreds of thousands of players like you'd get if you dropped a game in a public live setting for everyone to test and check out. That, even if you only drop the game for like six hours, like we saw the last play test be live for X Defiant back in September, you're gonna get hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of players logging in that will give you individual data points for every single player, every single interaction. Something that you can't replicate even in like multiple weeks, multiple months of testing simply in-house. So doing that makes sense and would logically be able to stress test all these new fundamental features. So for me, I think it makes logical sense and it seems like they'd still like to do that. They just don't know if they'll have the time to. So we'll see whatever comes or doesn't come of that. But for now, it's a possibility. Now that said, right now, the biggest thing is, yes, there still is no release date just yet for X Defiant. We talked about this a couple of days ago, where it seems like maybe we'll have that happen as of mid-February, early March. Based off of Ubisoft's recent earning calls back towards the end of last year, the target was for Q4 of their fiscal year, which was March 31st, if I'm not mistaken. So it seems like we'll have that late cap of the end of March for when we see this launch, but nothing is confirmed in any way, shape, or form. But that said, that's the most recent updates for X Defiant and what you should know here going forward. So that is, we're going to wrap it up. Before we do though, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel going into the new year here. Make sure to use code ESPRESSO for upwards of 30% off your entire order of G Fuel. To me, G Fuel is my cup of coffee in the morning, gets my productivity flowing and the day going. Whether you want to grab a restock or pick something up for the very first time, grab your favorite tubs like Hype Sauce, Pog Juice, or something like a starter kit, code ESPRESSO can help you out and offer you a nice discount year round of anywhere from 10 to 30% off your entire order. Personally, I'd recommend recommend my team of Carnage, our flavor of Pog Juice, Pink Drip, the Morbius Nectarine flavor, Starfruit, Hype Sauce, and others. But if you want to check anything out for yourself, check the link in the description below. And if you want to pick something up, use code ESPRESSO at checkout for, again, upwards of 30% off your entire order. But that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. Leave your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to X Defiant? What do you think of these clarifying statements, new information on other things? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so it was a single thing reading all things X Defiant, Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and other FPS content here on the channel. I'd love to have in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.